Life Machining, we're getting into building a drive shaft. We're going to talk about a few things that some people don't do when building drive shafts that are quite important. A few things that we're going to mention are balancing and how to keep things in balance without having to take it to get balanced and phasing. So stick with us. We're going to talk about a few of these throughout the video. So I had a customer bring me this out of a telehandler. It's got quite a while and it's, we're going to cut off each end of this drive shaft, reuse the yokes get some material and get this back straight again. All right, here we go. First thing we need to do is measure the overall length, get it cut apart here so that we can get a measurement on tubing size. Looking at 34 and a half inches and looks like three and a half. Yeah, three and a half inch. We'll get it cut apart and get a wall thickness just to be sure. Down wall thickness. We have our new material. It's a little thicker, so we'll have to bore that out. And for some reason, it has this indentation on the end. So we're going to have to cut that off. But we've allowed for extra length, so we should be good there. Now we're just going to get into finish cutting off this gnarly piece here, and then we'll get them both in the lathe. Get the ends turned off of them. We'll see how that goes. After a few turns, we've gotten this dialed in pretty close. The thing with drive shafts is that you pretty much want them dead on. That way, everything that you do from this point out will be dead on, dead straight, and it will take very little to balance them, which is what you won't get when you end up cutting them with a hacksaw or a zip wheel or whatever, which is fine. I've done it. I've done it in the past. but. Knowing what I know now and how to keep a drive line from vibrating and how to keep a drive line intact while 800 horse and a race trucks in front of it, you get the feel of how things work. I can I can usually build most race truck drive shafts without even having to balance them, and uh, they've been running for years and they have no issues. And so we're going to dial this dead on, and then we're going to go from there. As you can tell, that needle is still moving, which means we still have a little bit of work we can do yet to get that dialed in. So we're going to do that, and then we can start cutting. Take a cut off of that now, remove the end piece, and discard with the waste of the old uh, shaft material. Okay, so we got our ends cut out. Now we're just setting up the lathe to bring the uh, drive shaft into spec, the new piece of tubing. We're going to run a steady rest out here. I already had it set up, ready to go. We're going to put a piece of pipe in, take a skim cut up here, flip the pipe, take another skim cut, and that will allow our steady rest to ride in something that's actually true. The shaft has a little bit of a variance in the, in the material that we're using. So, we're going to get at that, and Another time lapse.
right, there's one side done. True it off. Run smooth, bit of a taper on the inside. Taper on the outside, ready for weld, with just a hair of something for it to butt up against. All right, we're gonna flip it around, do the other side. So, here we go. Should be pretty good, pretty close to where we want to be at anyway. Not too bad. So now we're getting into probably one of the most important parts of building a drive shaft, phasing it. Something that a lot of people will neglect or negate to do. Really, it's probably the most important part. So phasing the drive shaft is basically keeping these two yokes flat and perpendicular on the actual drive shaft itself. And what I like to do is I'll run a marker so I can get a decent distinct line and I'm going to mark it in a few different places on my in where I'm going to start my press fit and on my out after my press fit is complete I will still be able to have a reference of where that's going to be and then I'm going to use a known straight which is up against this corner it gives me a nice flat and then I just pull that down and scribe it there both starts and on the end there now that I got my mark we're gonna make sure that we can see those I'm gonna run my chisel mark right there right there and I'm gonna do the same on the other side we have our marks on our yokes and now we're gonna bring the drive shaft in and we're gonna do the same thing to it so that these marks are gonna line up with the marks on the drive shaft which gives everything a nice straight line So what I'm doing here is I'm just sticking this right in the V groove of the mill. So at this point now we're going to run a line across the dry shaft to keep our phasing correct with our yokes that we just punched our marks on. So what I'm using here is a height gauge. Set it close to where it's going to touch on the center and I can scribe a mark on either end of this to line up our yokes. Now this mark here, that you can see, is in line with this mark down here. And all I'll do is I'll punch those so that they're visible when we bring the pieces together so that everything is in line with each other, everything is straight, and when everything goes together, the yokes are going to be together and phased and balanced. You're not going to get that vibration going down the road of, of your two U-joints being out of sync. So that's what we'll do. Punch those right on the mark. We're going to put the yolks in the freezer, we're going to bring in the propane torch, and then we're going to sweat them together and weld them up. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, next to the steak and the Captain Morgan. Just waiting for this to contract around the pipe again. Keep a nice tight fit the whole way around. Feels like it's there. Okay, so we're gonna pull this out of the way, get some tack welds on it so that it won't move while we do the other side.
marks. You can see we're lined up perfectly here, same at the other end. So that's going to give us our correct phasing. Stay tuned for the time lapse. Okay, we just finished this drive shaft. It's uh, phased in correctly. We have both sides touching these ways on either side. A couple things to keep in mind when building drive shafts, whether you're at home or whatnot, is to keep everything as straight as possible. So keep your bores concentric with each other. Keep your cuts on your yokes even so that everything has a straight square edge for it to meet up. Planning a drive shaft build is 90% of what's going to keep you straight. Like you saw, I marked my phases separately so that everything could stay concentric and stay in balance. And that's a really big thing with doing drive shafts. It's going to make a big difference in how the end product's going to turn out. So keep those things in mind. I hope this video helped everyone out. And uh, until next time, see you later, Buzzy.